Hello everyone. So this is a Corbin after um a uh, about a day in the vinegar bath and then I took a uh, a wire brush. You can get the ones, you know the ones that have it like a toothbrush handle on it, wooden handle. And they're like parallel bristles and stuff. You can get them in nylon, but this thing had a lot of a uh, uh, crap on it and everything so I was trying to be gentle with it but you know to me the way I look at it is I'm trying to restore it as much as I can without screwing up its finish but this is not a museum piece you know I mean so I did as much as I could with the wire brush on it without scratching it up too much and then I took a little bit of brasso on this up here but there was still a little bit of uh, stuff in the letters here so I just took a pick you know, I just took a little pick and I just went through and scraped off the gunk with that. And, uh, I was using this little camel hair brush, you know, to brush it off. That Maybe that's like the archaeologist or whatever. But it did a pretty good job. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, I'm going to get it open. Now, there's two ways of getting a push lock open. One is the tension is basically, here's your core. And the Bible is basically up in here. You have to pull up on this shackle uh, to apply tension. And then you can try and pick it, you know, just like a regular uh, lock. And it'll turn, you know, when you uh, when you finally get it. That's one way. And the other way is uh, to use a shim. And you stick a shim right in there. And you still have to kind of like pick it. You're basically finding a shear line. You're pushing the uh, shim along as you go. You make it past each one, and eventually it'll it'll open the same way. So I'm going to get it open one way or another, and then I'm going to look at the pins in them because it's a lot like uh, the Yale, and I believe I believe the Yale is the uh, the original, you know, manufacturer or user of this type of um, the style of push lock, and I believe Corbin copied them, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, but anyways, because uh, a lot of manufacturers, I've seen other, there's sergeants, you know, that, i got one back here somewhere. Wasn't ready for a little show and tell on push locks, but uh, anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one apart and look at its pins and see how different they are and stuff. So, like I said, it'll be a, probably a multi-part type of a video, but I just want to show you how it cleaned up. And... Uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. And on this one, um, I have another Yale coming in just like this also that I'm going to try to clean up and get into the open state like I did this. See how that one has recessed? That's how the... And just by its very nature, you have to... They're susceptible to shims, basically, just because of the way the design of the, of the lock. Oh, yeah, here's a, here's a sergeant. I haven't opened up this one yet either. <laughs> I think I did clean him up. But, uh, like I said, Steel Penning saw that I had one of these before. <laughs> before I could clean the one I, that I, uh, that I got up. He, w he traded me this one for, which is also a cool push lock. So, <laughs> I don't have too many of them, but I'm getting way too many locks. <laughs> Well, I can't say way too many because I like I like locks, but we're having an overcrowding situation, and they're not fighting it. But some of them, there is a little push and shove contest that's been going on. So I'm gonna have to do something, and I've I've been thinking of an idea of you know adding boards on the back and putting pegs or like rods or whatever there and hanging them from hooks and stuff, but. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'll, I'll figure out something. I just want to show you how this came out, and uh, when I get it apart, I'll show you the pins and stuff like that. But thank you for watching, and happy picking! All right, so I got in the vise, just a shackle, and let's stick my screwdriver in here for tensioning. And I've got that guy down there as a spacer. 
and if I've got this in there tight enough and I get the tension just right, I can see the, the core pushing back. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that's your tension. You don't want to do too much, but you got to do enough. And then I'm going to current try to go in here and see if I can get this thing to open. They, as old as it is, I've seen like serrations and uh, kind of spoolish kind of things in the Yales. I don't know if that was their intent, but the the, the serrations almost look like a. Like it was a part of a, something grabbing, you know, the teeth of the jaws or something grabbing it. But it may have been intentional, I don't know. <clears throat> Even this big old vice here is moving around. I don't have it bolted down or anything, but it's moving around. I may have trying to apply tension. All right, I'm going to go with a different shape of the pick here. There I felt a slight something when I hit my key. They're usually in like four pins. I don't have a key with this one of course, but Thunk. So I may have to go the shim route. I like to try to give this a, a try. It's just a different way of picking. Like I said, you have to get it just right. Punk. If you get somewhere, it'll it'll turn. It'll actually, the cord will sink in. Kind of cool. Two minutes. Yeah, I'd say this is, for me, this is the slow way in, but shimmy isn't always fast either. You can get stuck and not make any progress with that one. Look at that. You can also break your picks. So there you go. There's another. This is only a $3 pick from Peterson. But yeah. Naughty Corbin. Very naughty. Yeah, you gotta watch when pushing up on pins. So I guess I'm gonna shim it now. Alright, so once you've broken a pick, or the alternate method is, uh, the shimping, shimming method is, um, this is where the first pin is, this far in. You can see that. Um, on this side it's really loose, but you can see how far the the shim will go in. So, I get over here and I touch the first pin. You don't have to apply any attention to the core, but you do need a pick that'll manipulate that. And then I hold the uh, I hold the lock in my hand. Get back here. Device out of the way. My messy workbench. Um. I put my thumb on the on the shim and I try to get on the first pin if I'm lucky and push on him until I get that uh, shim to go further in. Sometimes it takes like three hands. Unfortunately I've only got two hands. The vice is still in the way. Damn you. Damn you vice. Alright we get over here. Alright, I'm on that pin. And sometimes, you know, you can be going long. You'll get the first pin and you go, alright, cool. I'm making progress. And you go along and you'll have a problem. You'll run into a pin that... <laughs> Excuse me, doesn't want to... Uh, go to the shoe. I don't know. I usually like when I get the first pin, I'm like, ooh, cool. You know, I've got one of those. But it can, it can be tedious. Take time. Alright, I'm going to this one. Sometimes you can, you can push the pin, the key pin, beyond uh, what you would think. You basically just go underneath it like a comb pick. 
I don't know if I'm that. Maybe I'm that time. I don't think it's working on this one. You kind of like keep an idea. You'll feel it when you get one to go in. You kind of get an idea of how far you've gone. Because later on you're like, did I get past that one or not? Like, this is really over here. Stop clicking like a little clicker. I can see that camera there. But I haven't said any... I haven't pushed any beyond the... Because if, if you push it beyond... Push the keypad into the driver's stack, you're, uh... You won't see the keypad anymore when you're clicking the keyway. Dang it! I'm not getting very far. But anyway, that's a basic idea. That's why I'm, I'm making this in the short segment so you won't have to put up with all this. Alright, so... <clears throat> we have it, basically. To shim one of these, um... Cores basically, you um, push your your thumb pressure down on here. You're not having to do any shackle tension like that, and you're just going back and you're manipulating the uh, pins, all the ones that are springy, and um, you push down on this. Now, if you have serrated key pins, which sometimes you run into the on these locks like this. Um, You'll have to back off a little bit because uh, you're stuck in a serration and uh, allow the you know key pin to fall back and then uh, try it again. Uh, but once you get to where your shim is all the way down to the end, you can just pull on the shackle and turn. And that's another way. See, I, I, I have tried to pick these before, like I said, but uh, they're kind of a pain. Now... I have to get a square key or an Allen wrench or something that fits that and twist this off. And then we can get into the, the Bible. But that's that's one way of getting in. And that's the way of, most of the time I get into uh, most of my push key locks is that way. Because uh, picking, like I said, you can, you can break picks trying that. Although this is going to make an excellent knife tool now. Because usually the other ones, they break too short. And uh, all i got to do is grind this tip down. And it's going to make an excellent little bypass tool. So I'm not worried about that. And like I said, it was only a $3 pick. So There you go. That's the shim method of getting in to uh, push locks. Front load shim instead of a uh, core shim from the back like we used to. All right, so um, this wrench didn't exactly fit, but I took my little brass hammer, a little undersized, and I tapped him in there, and then uh, just counterclockwise, basically, to uh, to unscrew this guy. Should we over here where you can see everything going on? And he's wedged in there pretty good. There we go. Use the ball end now. And there's usually a little spring underneath here, a flat piece of metal. Which you can see right there. That acts as the uh, shackle, you know, kind of like tension thing. And then once we've got that done, we've got to pull this back a little bit. See, I pulled that back. Pull that back a little bit. And then the uh, core will pull out. Now... The Bible is straight down here. So, I mean, you can try to use a follower. Or if you're using the shim method, you can just kind of like pull them out. But just remember your key pins are going to be over here, wherever your shackle is at. So, turn it up a little bit. And we'll go out slowly. And we'll see what we get. Um, because the follower method, it's, it's only going to go in so far. Here's our first pin. You see him? <laughs> you see him? It's probably been a hundred years since anybody's seen him. Let me get a pinning tweezers for this momentum, momentous event. Don't, don't, don't fall down. And I should get my special, um, bubble mat. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it going? There it is. My bubble mat I put in my lap here to catch any wild pins because I really don't have any room, as you see. As you can see, I don't have any room here. 
But we are about to reveal pin number one. Now these are the uh, driver pins that are going to pop up first. Two. Oh yes. See, that's the reason why you want to... Uh... God, that's just a bunch of gunk there. It might have been a spool at once. I'll pull him out. That's it's probably only a four pin lock, but we'll pull him out. And look at the gunk in the spring. Springs are not in a, in a bad shape, though. Like I said, this has only been um, a day and a half. Uh, about a day in the vinegar bath. Now, the key pins will start showing up here on top, too, so I gotta watch out that I don't. I don't know if you can see this. It's a little glare going on here. I've got two different lights. Hey! Now see, he jumped down here somewhere. There he is. Real tiny. Like a standard driver. He's real short. With a very good strong spring there. Alright, where are we? All right, we're coming up to hole number three. They're a little bit less likely to escape as further they get back, but you never know. He's on the edge. Bam. Grimy looking. See, the lock will function a lot better, too, and the standard of another... He's like the size of the the first pin that I ran into. Oh, I've been putting them in the wrong sequence. I would say that this is, if I'm going this way, this is not pin five. That's pin one. So put him over here like this. One, and then you were in the middle, so you were two. Get over there. And then three. And make sure your corresponding spring. They all look the same, but I like to be precise on this if I can be. One. Back to our experiment here. All right. Keep going. See number four. Number four was launched. Another big standard grungy driver with a nice spring though. The springs are not all flattened out. So I believe that's it. That was something. What was that? I think it's only four pins. Yeah. I pull the shim out. Right, I was just looking in there. There's your key pins. They're all grungy. I'm going to try to push them up with a picklet. I call this pin one, but this is actually probably pin one. But that's how I pulled them out, so I'm going to put what I call pin one. doesn't matter. I don't have a key anyway. Well, he's not pointed at all on the end. It's just like flat. But I'll put him down there. Yeah, it's real gummy. There's another one, he's not, he's actually bigger than the, than the driver. Get up there, he's all stuck. This is probably the one that broke my pick. Yeah, because four came out.
but three is stuck. The pick breaker. Oh, there's something else in there. What is that? It's like a little ball bearing. Or um, a wafer. Look at that. It's a ball bearing. <laughs> I didn't expect that. It's probably a ball bearing under each one of them. That's odd. Very odd. I was not expecting that. And I've got kind of room to roll around, so you have to get your pick right underneath them. That was very odd. Very odd and unusual and strange and bizarre. No wonder. No wonder I broke a pick. I, I probably got that ball bearing underneath the wrong place. Boy. Right. What is that? Sorry this is taking so long, but I wasn't expecting ball bearings. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? No wonder these, I was looking at the key pins and I thought, man, normally you bevel them at least a little bit to help the key go in and out. But they didn't bevel them, they didn't have to bevel them because they used ball bearings. So this guy's really gunky. I'm going to clean him off with a rag a little bit, you know, and stuff before I put him in there. But uh, it's in pretty good shape for its age. But what's really amazing are the pins. I want to get it down there where you can see the pins. Or bring the pins over and bring the camera over. All right, so take your Dramamine tablets because here we go for a little roid. But yeah, these little, um, excuse me, these, these little ball bearings are, uh, I don't know if he wants to be gripped. Look at the go, spring. Stop it. Stop it. Trying to get, I'm looking through the camera and trying to do this. There we go. Let go. No. Get over there. Get over there. There. Bingo. Now you. Roy. Right. Stop acting up. The drivers are all square. And of different shapes. This one's of a different size. Well, I mean a different size. Of course, the key pins are going to be of different size, but every one of them has these little ball bearings, and uh, that's why I broke a pick off in it. But yeah, it's just got a bunch of uh, it's cast iron body, and uh, like I said, that's just the core retaining thing, and it acts. It's a leaf spring, so it acts as a. Oh, what are you doing over there, kitty? The cat is up to something. And that's just your, your end cap, which, you know, you get whatever you can to fit in there and, and twist it out. Stand up. There. But there you go. And where's my, uh, where's my, uh, well, yeah, so it's in my lap now. There we go. Put him over like that. So there, there's how to tear apart a Corbin. Now, if I wanted to uh, rekey it, since this is out, all I have to do is um, find something that'll fit that keyway. There's no warding. Some of them are warded on push keys, but there's no warding. And then uh, stick my flat piece of metal in there. And, uh, Kitty, stop it. <laughs> Jumped off the table. Typical cat. Um, yeah, I made one out of a, an old car key. I mean, you know, like, car dealership type of thing. I don't know where he's hiding right now. But, uh, yeah. 
There you go. There's a look at the odd and strange little. They're all dirty right now, but yeah, I didn't expect the ball bearings. That was a big surprise. And those, when I clean them up, I doubt if we're going to find any serrations, but if there would have been, look at all that gunk. So, thank you for watching, and uh, happy picking whenever you get into uh, something like this. It might be happy shimming.